uh, study which uh, took almost two years. Um, it was it started primarily as a as a review that we wanted to do uh, of the work that they've been doing in one particular revelation in Jumanar, which is a major revelation. Um, but in, in, in some ways, maybe we could not do everything that he had wanted. And in other ways, I think we went beyond the original uh, discussions. But we, and it was, we, we, part, of, part of what we did was to look at or try and understand uh, the primary as well as secondary impacts of uh, what are listing at the revelation scale. Um, we also look at the secondary impacts, uh, the impact of this whole movement, not only AKRSP's work, but also the work done by other NGOs and government departments in Nagal Basin on the agrarian economy of Nagal. And then we also look at the institution side where AKRSP has promoted and supported uh, an informal group which is called the core group. It's a group of villagers, um, respected and influential villagers. Uh, there are 55 villages roughly in, in Nagar Basin and they represent several of them. And the idea is to slowly grow this group or actually the group will has been and will take its own shape organically. But for it to become a coordinating agency, maybe in a distant future, also take on some role of a renovation organization. Uh, so we we'll talk about three, these three different aspects. I'll start with the just overview of what we did in each of these uh, themes. In hydrology, uh, we collected precipitation and uh, runoff data. The availability of runoff data is very poor. Uh, there is one uh, station. Uh, for which some patchy records were available, but otherwise, um, because it's a small little basin, and anyway, it's difficult to access the, the data that government collects. Uh, these records are not are not very high quality. Rainfall data is relatively more reliable, easier to access. Uh, then, AKRSP, uh, even before this study started in 2004 and in 2009, AKRSP had done. I shouldn't call them service, but census of all the check dams in the river basin, irrespective of whether they had helped construct them or the people had constructed themselves or some government department or some other NGO had constructed them. So there already was a good database of, of all the structures, water structures in the river basin, along with a hand drawn map with draft locations. So that was a very good starting point for us. In 2011, we repeated this census with the help of local students. Um, and uh, we also geo-referenced these, we had simple GPS devices. And then we, we, did, uh, we were able to get a very good quality uh, geo-reference map uh, as well as locations. And when we did this location survey or the GPS survey, we also collected dimensions of the check dams to get a rough idea of the storage that we calculated is not accurate, but it's based on some certain some rules. We also asked the farmers about the quality of the structure, whether it's broken, whether it, 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 it stores water, how many times in a year it fills. So we also did collect this data. And we also asked them what are the uses that each of these structures are made of. Uh, we integrated all this data in our GI database with the help of NPS, which is also in Anand. Um, there was a study on the geology of Nagar and a few other basins like Aquadam, uh, which was a useful literature. And then we did collect some CCWB data on water levels, but I must admit that we had a very really useful data, very good really, data really for our guys. Uh, what we did then was we made a very simple, uh, some may even call it simplistic, uh, model, lump model in matter, and we tried to run based on certain uh, simple uh, assumptions. We tried to have a dry run of to see how how the basic would behave uh, over time. 
in the socio-economic part, uh, there are different activities that the KSP has undertaken. There are check dams, there is percolation banks, there is worry months, and then there is promotion of written spectra irrigation. Uh, we did a village level survey on fruitside villages where we asked questions about land use, season wise crop, uh, irrigation, productivity, cross output, prices for two kinds of years. This project started in uh, 2001, 2002, 2002 um, and it's going to end this year. Yeah, it's yeah. more, more or less this year or next year. So, over the, uh, what we did was we asked people uh, the same information we had we had to collect data. Uh, we asked them what was the proposed situation 10 years ago, and if somebody asked, we gave reference here to thousand one. And what is the situation in closing in uh, or we wanted to collect more data from the local agriculture monies, but that data was not easy to access. In addition to looking at just the impact on agriculture, we also wanted to do a more intensive study on the equity impacts of uh, check dams. Uh, sometimes it is argued that structures such as these, which are built uh, by the community themselves, are prone to elite capture. And we wanted to see what has been the impact of the check dams uh, on equitable access of of water in the village. So for that we did uh, a more detailed study in the <coughs> On the institution side, like I said, we explored whether the whole group can perform as their uh, hero. <coughs> we looked at, uh, looked at some of the cultural aspects and uh, the river basin identity that the ETR space tried to create in the using uh, religious and cultural symbols. Um, then we look at Borivan, which are basically cement bag dams. They are uh, sometimes created on uh, first order streams. Sometimes they are put on top of check dams temporarily in these sacrifices. And we looked at Polygon in a CPR context and we talked about it uh, towards the end of the day. The whole capacity of small platform systems, from both perspectives, may have a good idea. And uh, I think from a, just from hydrology perspective, as you know, even performance, they don't want to talk about impact and distribution, so it's shared with the government. Because of hydrology, it's very interesting. The way we put all these act together, uh, it's not by design, as you see, but uh, in fact, the, the smaller size uh, systems that we have, and the, the small medium reservoir systems, and the check dams. The check dams are getting benefited also by these uh, systems. Uh, okay. Let's share this open about this. Yeah, the question is also about uh, so this basin, uh, just in action, it flows from this deep kind of area, deep forest kind of area, to the uh, LVC. It's just 80 kilometers long, mega basin. The mega basin is only 80 kilometers, 80 kilometers long. That, that's all. And the whole area uh, is just 400 square kilometers. And a lot of uh, Sarashtra is, uh, I think Sarashtra is not, all the Sarashtra rivers are unique, 15, 20 of them. Not all of them are so short. I think just maybe 200 kilometers. So if you just put Zarashtra, it's, it's inverted. I keep hearing this inverted sausage, and just repeat the same word. So you sort of goes from you know, either Gheer uh, or from uh, Chodi or Kaitafi. Yeah. And it all goes to Arabic in different directions. So if you take one little piece like this, it actually gives you a vision for looking at Zarashtra as a whole. It's different. I've given it to you, it's reflex, it's so we keep so repeating so that we don't get a laboratory for us. We see a lot of interesting things. So we keep spending. So for us, we are trying to look at how these larger dams and smaller dams together create an entire ecology. Point number one. Point number two, we keep talking, talking about research. And there's no alternative. How do we study? There's no data. There's no good. But on the other hand, we have observations. When people are around, we observations. 
many things, people have been working there, so how do you use all of this within a scientific perspective to create something objective, also case in case scenarios. So this, this was something, you know, these were interesting things for us and trying to quantify things as much as possible and take it on to economics and uh, other, other things. So this was in fact I wanted to write to the question here. Uh, so I had one question that uh, you know, the criticism of uh, small dams, like even the large size the large size dams, right? this concept of dependability. But dependability is something which is used in water resources for designing large reservoir systems. Uh, it's basically you know you look at probability as I said, long term rain for over 100 years and longer. Then how dependable is the system for certain kind of uh, storage? I think generally we are going down for 70% or 80%. 30 so the question here is that these structures are not as dependable according to uh, that picture. The whole difference with water resource engineers is that we talk about surface storage. So when we talk about surface storage for check dams, uh, it doesn't mean much. When we talk about large dams, they don't fill four, five, six times in a season. But small check dams fill so many times in the season. There are some check dams which fill only four times. But there are other check dams which fill ten times, you know, they fill a lot more. So the dependability you talk about here should not be for the service for the store. It should be for what we are going to use this system. Maybe we are going to use this for recharge. So maybe if you are talking about recharge of a certain volume, then how much is the structure dependable for that certain water recharge? The whole thinking has to change. When we talk about water resources systems of a river basin, where we have a lot of small scale structures, concept of dependability remains, but how do you look at dependability in history? We try to bring it into the question. So as to try at some kind of balance between uh, these two different perspectives, I would say what traditional water resource engineers and then more socially oriented uh, scientists. No, scientists are scientists. These, these are both scientists. We I mean, should not talk about science. one science being higher than other, these are scientists. But I think these are just different perspectives uh, from different sciences. These are all the things that we use which Shim had uh, summarized before. Uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of systems that we use are more open system systems. So that uh, things can be used and this uh, kind of things that we created now being used in other businesses in this Can you see? Yeah. I think uh, I can put the screen at your slides. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> the three points here are important. Uh, the sense, uh, I think, something which also uh, Apollo had mentioned before. This is a little busy. You have small storage structures all across the basin. But these are three points where you have relatively large uh, storage structures. And someone, when someone may point out, why do you have a large storage structure just at the end of the basin? What would be the reason for that? Yeah. 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 Uh, they can, they can so that we have water in one way, they can try to. Uh, the impact of these regulators is very There is debate on how they as well. Because, because but these are big storage structures. And then there are four different streams. Um, there are four different streams here. There are four different streams which are not mainstream, main rivers, which finally join the main river, uh, which is main river, which goes to. So, uh, what we have done uh, in a study in terms of data collection is to actually look at each of these storage structures. Storage structures that we are looking at is the nature dams. So, in this case of uh, 400 plus square kilometers, you have at least 800 uh, check dams of different uh, sizes. So, this is the kind of numbers that we have Yeah, 800, 800, 850 check dams. And, you know, we were helped a lot by the surveys which were done by the uh, so, what we did was then we had students who went to each of the check dams with the GPS instrument and then finally uh, still you miss the uh, other and then finally on, on, uh, uh, we used to do the PSV spot and other check dams. So, mostly we had one of the other one. Then there was a surveys on good dimensions of the structures and distance to which the water is involved. 
the way it So the assumption we have made is that the shape behind which the water is formed is a triangle. This is an assumption. This is all we have made is we have made this assumption because we cannot do any better than this. So that is what we need. Giving us a volume of the <coughs> assumption. So rapid to have many very modified uh, uh, wave uh, uh, colors for 20 years uh, in this condition. And this is from 80 to 2002, but beyond that, there is different uh, wave, uh, different rainfall intercept. This gives a very good idea about the rainfall patterns, but there are four rainfall intercepts uh, which we use in this study. Uh, similarly, as uh, Shepard mentioned, there is only one stream flow data, which is at Baru, which is not exactly at the end position, but uh, around 10 kilometers before uh, the end point is supposed to be. There are limitations. So if you uh, think one of the approaches that uh, we took to implement and uh, bring in as much as possible, this is booked by uh, uh, the this book is actually where he talks about you know, doing hydrology in difficult contexts. Difficult contexts, you know, he, you know, for example, he describes that you go, uh, you, for example, take drugs, but so there are not there are not three instruments. Uh, it's not based in the traditional sense. But then there are a lot of observations. And then you have one measurement from somewhere, few rainfall data stations. You know that including you can actually describe the whole thing. But then if you just use a traditional methodology model, you end up saying that no data. Which you know that there is, you know much more than that. So what do you do with all this? So one thing which we did was uh, looking at rainfall runoff relationship on the basin as well. Uh, and looking at uh, runoff prohibitions for the basin as well. Using that as an indicator for so four sub basins of the basin. This uh, does me currently uh, happen. The familiar with head catching this rule of our weather phenomenon. What we did was try to bring aquifers into it and also small storage. <coughs> so these are things which are missing uh, from larger basin uh, storage. So what we use as catchments which are providing us water, aquifers which are absorbing and also providing water, from which we are also pumping water every day throughout the year, and then storages which are located all over the streams. So in this model we are uh, taking rainfall, uh, flowing them onto the catchment, into the aquifers, uh, over onto the uh, check dams. The difference from the uh, head catchment model is that there is also infiltration and recharge. This is very important. Especially in this context. And which is taken as a loss for head because in the water resources thinking, uh, you know, the reach, infiltration is a loss. Whereas for us, this is a gain. Uh, so these are different things for which uh, it can be used for. You know, so, the so these are four, uh, if you look at the basin as a whole, and then uh, four streams that join the middle, uh, these are four middle four, four, four small subbasins of the uh, of the middle rivers. And in our analysis, we put these four small subbasins as separate units. And uh, then lump all the storage levels and the properties and put it into these subbasins. So when we went out here from before, we are talking about uh, each of these subbasins as a whole lump form. Because it's, it was tough, tough for us. You know, we could actually do a model for uh, each piece which is meaningless. So we didn't have information as such a function. Uh, these are parameters which we use, which we use as uh, mentioned from previous hydrological studies, but we have done our own parameters as well. Uh, and the data set that we use for those 20 years. 20 years includes you know, broad periods, such as you know, four continuous broad period periods, and then also this high rainfall period. So it has extreme, but it doesn't have all these other extremes of rainfall, which are uh, I don't know if I think about it because I think it will become very confusing if you see it from there. I try to find out, I try to point you out to what we probably need for so. What, what this shows is that uh, in one of the subbasins, it shows the amount of storage in the aquifer which is having in the day. So this is here, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 90, 95, and so on. If you see the storage which are happening, the storage are going down in the late 80s. Uh, so there is, uh, there was, there is storage happening from here to here, but then it is not as much as to capture it to the end of this. But after this, uh, after, after this drawing is happened, again, uh, the storage is picked up and come back to the previous place. Uh, yeah, we also need again for uh, other storage. Here, especially you know, when we look across different services, uh, coming back to 
you know, the first one of the few first things, uh, one, of the, one of the services that actually has a small visible time, uh, constructed by the postal celebrity division cell in uh, 91 or 92. Initially, you know, there were different thoughts about constructing the library. Very interesting thing. It has become what? Entirely a recharge plan. It's not used for irrigation at all. And another aspect is that uh, this stuff really appreciates it with that because it's leaking. You know, it keeps leaking toward the year. And this leakage is actually transferred by the Jetta through Stone. That way, you see, Rajmi as a sub basin is so much a part of the region. compared to the other sub basins of the system. That is, if you compare to the sub basins which lie more towards the west side, Rajmi has greater, greater recharge happening because of the medium visible system. And if we didn't have the smaller jet dams on the stream below, it would have been flowing continuously down to the sea for the year. And these are captured, uh, you know, very interesting because uh, the boiling wells are actually down the boat. Many of these boiling wells are constructed on top of the uh, jet dams on the river. So these boiling wells in the other streams are constructed during just after monsoon. Whereas it actually just keeps flowing uh, water over the year. These are constructed more later in the January of the because of the leakage of So this is an example where you, know, you have a larger than the benefit in the recharge from all the leakage of the system. And you this act of the system. Uh, yeah, I think something important which yeah, which we are very interested in and which will be used later in the larger analysis is about uh, what proportion the total recharge in the surface is actually being contributed by each for and what is being contributed by this feature. The nominal for act budget, uh, property intensity has increased from 1.5 to nearly 2, which is also awesome. But now the tricky question is, um, agriculture has grown, right? But how much of that can be attributed to this sector? And how much of it is happening because of price rise, inflation, BT cotton, and I'm not, there is no BT government neighbor, but yes, it's a question for Sarasha in general. So then uh, we discussed some <coughs> alternate approaches that we could use uh, to, to refine these, these numbers. Um, one is that, I mean, we have these these growth numbers for different seasons, right? We have how much is growth in the monsoon season, winter season, summer season, and how much is the growth in uh, created by annual crops. So we could say, okay, maybe monsoon growth is uh, one thing, but non-monsoon growth is largely because of their storage is created. That is one way of looking at it. If we could find a good control, which is difficult in Sarasa, uh, then we could say, okay, growth in Nagal, where there have been 850 check dams versus growth in what is Noli, the river basin adjacent, where if there were no check dams, then we could say, or growth in Nagal, this will be overall growth in Junagar as a whole, then that would be a better approach. A third approach, which to me sounds more uh, nuanced, but is also more difficult to do, is to say, Okay, even within Nagal there are 55 villages. I wanted to see, I don't know why we put those diagram here, but uh, okay. So what we found in this analysis, I, we haven't put those numbers here, uh, those chart. Basically was that the, the, the access to water did not change significantly in terms of, uh, in terms of the classic cases we made. We, we did it class-wise, we did it class-wise. And we did not see any significant difference in the access to water before and after the intervention. We have uh, argued in favor of one or the other. Now, when you have to construct polygons in a very small window of opportunity every year, then how do you start? Should you start upstream and then slowly build downstream? Or should you first build the downstream polygon? And then whatever what is left, you go off in. Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of both. But in respect to which method you follow or which rotation you follow, the point is there is collaboration between upstream and downstream uh, villages, um, communities that are uh, benefiting from these polygons. Then there are no issues. But this can also lead to conflicts. So there were also people talk about. We don't know whether they actually happen of villagers uh, downstream coming and breaking upstream in or whatever.
So there are some issues uh, at the village level and at the territory level. Now, when, like I said, in uh, transferring knowledge was one of the issues that we highlighted because 2012 or 13, in chemistry, what will happen to this core group? The group themselves have, have been considering these three options. Uh, and uh, the ACRS case basically left it to them to decide, which is I think the first fair choice. They, they can continue as an informal voluntary group without ACRS uh, They can register themselves as an NGO type of trust. Or they can form a producer company. In fact, some, some of the group members were quite excited about this, building a neighbor brand and start selling the. the uh, they started doing a lot of crops which they were unable to do earlier. And they want to sell those crops with the main of right now. Okay. Okay.